Hello, welcome to Convict Inc. I'm your host, Robert Rosso. Before I begin, I want to um, thank you guys. I just went over the 14,000 mark. Um, much appreciated. Um, I, I, I really, I, I'm humbled that, that um, I'm still getting subs from in here, and I really want to just tell you guys that I appreciate it. And before I go any further, please uh, go check out the merchandise, merchandise section. There has been some t-shirts, and I don't know exactly what else is moving. I think the mugs, um, the mugs, the stickers were put in the wrong spot. But anyway, so because I'm on my way to Butner, as most of you do know, that I'm on my way to the Butner Federal Medical Center in North Carolina here shortly. I'm currently still in Garth Brook country in Oklahoma. And yes, if I only knew how the king would fall, I might have changed it all. <laughs> anyway, so uh, if you guys don't know, that is uh, a Garth Brooks song, one of the Garth Brooks' best songs. The song is um, uh, The Dance. Actually, he didn't uh, write it, but anyway. Okay, way off topic. Okay, so here's the deal. I was a butler in 2007 uh, because of bladder cancer. Um, Prior to me going to Butner, a guy out of New York that many of you New Yorkers know by the name of Jack Benino beat me there. Jack had uh, colon cancer or rectal cancer, and um, he left about a month or he left Lewisburg about a month or two before I did. Uh, Jack Benino, of course, many of you know, is um, the, the fall partner of uh, Danny Fama's brother. Um, Jack turned rat, I think it was, in 2010 or 11. Uh, I was really sorry to hear that. He was a really good guy, but anyway, some people don't have that kind of a constitution. Anyway, so Jack Benito, when I arrived at Butner, was at the door to greet me. And um, as a matter of fact, he was the first one, first one to put Percocets in my hand when I walked in the door. And um, he, being from New York, was one of the guys that hung out with uh, Greg De Palma. Greg De Palma, many of you know, was one time, uh, once spent a time with Captain the Gambino crime family. Um, Greg, I must say, was Butner. If you were Italian or you were a wise guy or you were in the mob, no matter what family you were from, Greg De Palma was Butner. He held down Butner. That is the FMC. He lived in uh, on 4C. That's uh, the fourth floor C range. He lived in the back cell, and all things that happen at Butner happen through happen through at Greg's cell when it comes to the Italians. Greg held all the Greg held the food that was made for the sauce on Thursdays and Sundays. Greg had the cigarettes in his cell. Greg had all the stories. Every wise guy that came through Butner went to four C. Uh, in two. Th yeah, in, 2000, in 2007, Jack Menino introduced me to Greg De Palma. And I'll tell you what, he fast became one of my favorite Italians. Um, I was, I, the, I've said this in the past, when I was at Lewisburg, I got close to many of the, the Italian guys out of New York. Uh, Jojo Russo was one of the first ones I met at Lewisburg. Jojo ultimately, um, at the age of 54, got cancer, and we crossed paths at Butner as well. But um, outside of Jojo, Greg De Palma was was one of the guys that I really can actually spend like days with in itself, especially since I was blasted out on dope. I mean, so my mornings really consisted of waking up, chasing percocets or other opiates all day and I would just go sit and listen to Greg tell stories and stories he did have I know the New York Post dubbed him uh, said he had foot and mouth disease uh, that is because uh, being caught on recordings and um, of course he introduced to the Gambino family Donnie Brasco too I forgot the guy's name he was a Cuban uh, and Greg was responsible for that now, the fact, I think that was on 60 Minutes. Anyway, let me get to the point of what the thumbnail's about. Greg found out, me and Greg became friends, okay? Like, I, I really, when I say that I spent uh, more than half my days in Greg the Palma's cell, I, I'm telling you that could be an understatement. And this is um, Feb starting in February of 2007. And um, Greg just told fantastic stories. Uh, 
some of one of his claims to fame was the what is it, the Westminster or the Westchester, whatever theater you guys from New York that are mob fanboys or, or just know that. Uh, you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, a lot of funny stories about that. Uh, he knew a lot of celebrities. Was in golf tournaments. Um, I don't know one thing. People. Uh, well, there's a lot of people that do it. Greg um, was strung out on oxycotton. <laughs> Like like many of us, but uh, that it was not supposed to happen. I guess when you're a wise guy. Anyway, I'm not here just to smirch or be a little. So, Greg found out that I was. Uh, I don't want to say a writer. I want to say becoming a writer. At that time, I was working on my first manuscript, was which was about Leavenworth. It's just this run-on uh, first draft that I never really even finished. But he used to ask me to come in the mornings, and I'd, I'd sit down and I would read with him, read to him things that I wrote, and he liked it. And one day, of course, he said that he wanted me to write a book about him. Uh, and uh, if you knew Greg De Palma, you would laugh at just at me saying that. But what happened was I started taking notes. And um, of course we started doing it like starting in his childhood. Do you guys know out of all this time that I've been out of prison or talked about mob or had mob Mondays, I had notes all along of Greg De Palma and certain things that he told me and that he wanted to be put out there. And uh, I, I just remembered him recently. So I'm really looking forward to when I get out take photocopies of it because I mean I've got some pages of this now and uh, that would be some stuff that some people would really like and I'm not this is not such a deep dark secret and this Greg has since passed God rest his soul um, but this isn't something that like he told me in confidence what I'm about to say like and I'm just sitting there putting it out there now uh, he talked about it in front of people I remember Fat Sal Scalia being in there for sure I believe Tommy Crotty was in there one of the times but um, what happened was at the age of 12, Greg uh, said that he, well, he didn't say it, but he was becoming a little hellion, I guess. I don't know what you called it in those days. But uh, he had a gun, and uh, the first person he, he said that he ever shot was a beat cop. Uh, didn't know if he killed him. Um, some dark humor as he was telling the story, but he was 12. That did happen, or he said that it happened. Greg, people... Uh, consider Greg to be kind of windy. Said he can spin a, spin, a, spin a good yard, if you know what I mean. But uh, she had some conviction when he told her. I, I believe that was probably true. Uh, asked why he did it. He said, no, I don't know. <laughs> it was just, you know, he, at the age he'd already, like, took on the anti-authority streak and uh, maybe was uh, already looking towards being a wise guy or whatever. I, I, don't, I don't know how that works. Uh, but I just thought about that, and I really, I cannot wait to tear through that manuscript because I know what it was that. Um, it's, in the, it's in the manuscripts that I have that I started about Leavenworth. And uh, like I said, I'll be able to actually shoot photos of it and, and show them because he sure did want me to write a book about him. Of course, um, my, me and Greg's partnership, because I didn't smoke tobacco, but I, but I had cigarettes when I was at Butler last time. By the way, Butler cops, I will not this time. I have no interest in anything like that, nor narcotics or tobacco or nothing else. I'm going to go down there. I'm going to do an AA program. They do have an AA program in there. I have uh, talked to a friend who has an organization on the outside, and I'm going to see if I can get a couple of his classes in there. And um, I've got some goals I want to do down there. And uh, by the way, that was uh, one of the greatest NA meetings, AA meetings, whatever you want to say. And um, one of the one of the ones I'll never forget was at Butner. That's when I spoke for a long time, preaching to everybody how the evils of drugs while I was fucking whacked out. But uh, this time I'm going to try it differently. Anyway, other guys that were at Butner during that time, and I've talked about this before, can't forget Matty the Horse. Boy, Matty the Horse, uh, the funniest guy nobody ever understood. Nobody ever said what the fuck he was saying. He, he mumbled, uh, he giggled, and you couldn't understand anything he was saying. Um, tall guy, uh, obviously he was saying funny stuff because he laughed every time he spoke. Um, I remember one night they put him up on the fifth floor because he had a walker. He really needed to be in a wheelchair. He was clumsy, just old age, he was 89. And he fell down and busted his head. And I'm gonna tell you, uh, boy, that man bled. The you know, head cuts have a lot of blood anyway, but boy, did he bleed. Uh, meanwhile, he had his girlfriend that was, I think, 35 years old. He moved up to Butner while he was up there. 
uh, people do that too, so I'm not putting this business out there like that. A lot of people do that. She was, she was very pretty. I don't know his family situation. I believe he was married. I, I don't know. Um, Philly Black. I don't know who the hell Philly Black was or where he was from. Was he Jersey? Philly? Uh, not a not a not a wise guy, but a probably a, night, a wise guy wannabe or a swinger. Nice guy, can't say he wasn't. Um, of course, Tommy Karate, one good friend of mine, uh, who became a good friend of mine, was there. Um, what did we do? Like I said, Greg Cell, four C, stayed in the back. My mom died from smoke, smoked in his room. Or I'm sorry, that's not true. That's not true. Greg had a black guy across the, across the hall from him, and that's where everybody powwowed the tobacco. He didn't do it in Greg's cell. Um, Greg loves sweets, loved them, so do I. Uh, at the time, I was on a, a diet. Um, I would eat a candy bar every night. I remember he accused me of stealing a candy bar out of his locker. <laughs> I don't, like out of the blue, and I was I was kind of hurt by it. Uh, I did not, and he ended up finding that finding the candy bar. Uh, and you know what else? If anybody, there's going to be somebody listening to me that was there with me. Daniel Castelli, Cosby, how you doing? Okay, there's somebody, but I'm going to say this. Greg had a son. I think his name was Craig. Craig apparently was into that life or trying to be. You guys know about it more than I. According to Greg, he, uh, he, staff at USP Atlanta tried to kill him, okay? Hung him, tried to kill him. Uh, he was a vegetable in a vegetative state. Um, every night he would call home, he would call his wife, who would visit their son in a nursing home, I guess you would say. Uh, and this is how the phone call would go. How's Craig? Okay. You no good, dirty, rotten, whole son of a... He called the C word and everything else. That's every single day. Why that woman didn't hang up... You have one minute uh, remaining. The money. He stayed. He, he had, uh, I wouldn't say plenty. He drew four commissary. Had, uh, like a lot of the Italians, bought up, paid over, paid too much money for the tomatoes. And uh, had all the tomatoes in the cell and other things. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop now. Again, thanks for your support. I appreciate the new subs. I would say to join the membership, but I don't know why, because I don't know what I'm doing with them. If you like this video, please like, share it with your family, friends, enemies, etc. Take care.